and uh, get this party started here. Okay, the recording is started, so let's call the CV Fiber Governing Board meeting for October the 11th to order at 6.01. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Um, there we go, sorry. Are there uh, any public comments? Alan, go, sir. Yeah. Am I on? You can hear me okay? Oh, yep. yeah, just fine, Alan. Okay, great. So I had a note from a legislator today saying he had seen the article in the Times Argus about CV fiber and noted that it had a list of member towns which includes Elmore. And he asked me, uh, I don't know whether uh, whether Elmore didn't let CV Fiber know or not, but they are no longer on the list because they are with Lamoille Fiber. And he wanted me to pass this information on to whoever needs to know. He says their name should be taken off our list of towns. I wrote him back. And this was one of my two representatives, Avram Pat. And interestingly, our district is a large one. It covers not only Worcester, but also it covers Elmore and now a bit of Stowe and Morrisville as well. I wrote Avram that, um, you, you know, you can't just you can't just walk away from this. There's actually a withdrawal procedure in the CUD statute, which is fairly complex and it, it takes a bit of time and it involves some meetings. And I said, you know, I don't even know if Elmore contacted us, even in somewhat a formal way, but it's my understanding that they just sort of left and their representatives haven't been at our meetings forever. Um, so I'm not quite sure what to do. So well, uh, look, give me a second here. I'll move on to Chuck in a second. Alan, they've never contacted me about leaving. Has um, anybody and you're right, there is a process. Ever? And nobody's had informal contact with them because I'm I'm not and my town borders it. So you would think that maybe they would have approached somebody like me. Um, I, don't, I haven't seen any emails from them. And as clerk, I might be one of the people that they you, would contact. Yes, that's right. It's on Janiel's right. list to talk to the select board. Go ahead. Go ahead, Chuck. Let's hear from you, sir. Yeah, Janiel and I actually exchanged a couple of emails about this today because um, I was asking <laughs> whether we should be removing them. Their, their delegates from our Microsoft uh, domain uh, and removing their names from our website. Um, so I, you know, I, I will hold on that until uh, this matter uh, comes to a little bit more resolution. Yeah, I'll tell you what I'll do, just so people know, I'll copy this, this section of the statute, it's called withdrawal of a member municipality, and I'll send it around to people just so you have it. It's, it's, uh, it's it really is quite involved. <laughs> So I, I'm I'm not quite sure what's going to happen next. Uh, R.D., I see your hand is up, sir. Yeah, I just want to note that um, uh, this could affect our ability to get a quorum if we have an inactive town that's still formally a part of the district. That That's correct. That's something we've been talking about for a number of months now that we uh, yeah. they're affecting our ability to have a quorum because they never show up. But we've been getting much better attendance recently. I, I yeah, I, I, I do believe. So do you, that do, was it, what was that? Was that a public comment? What was? Yes, what? it was. <laughs> yeah, it was a yeah. public comment. Okay. Are there any additional public comments? Okay, I have two residual hands raised. No, from I'm trying RD to get mine down. Alan. Oh yeah. yeah. Sorry. I'm trying to Thanks. get mine down. And let's uh, let's go to the meeting minutes, please. Jeremy? Uh, motion to approve the governing board meeting minutes from September 13th, 2022 as drafted. Second. Second. Ah. Who do you hear first, Jerry? I got to put someone down. You're muted, though. <laughs> You're muted, Jerry. You're muted. I hit the button too many times. I'm sorry. 
Are, are there uh, any opposed to the motion? Now, who is second? He needs to know who is second. Siobhan. Siobhan was second. Yeah. Any any opposed to the motion? Hearing none, any abstentions? Hearing none, unanimous. Thank you very much, everybody, for the meeting minutes. Um, I'm going to go to our uh, chair of the finance committee to kick off the treasurer's report. Yeah, thank you. I thought uh, Lori Beth was going to be here. And um, you may have noticed in your inbox today that uh, you got an email from her. Um, and I am going to. Um, boom. Uh, what is that? Oh, OK. Boom. She was the other one here. Yeah, sorry, let me just gather her material here. There are days, you know. <laughs> yeah, she, okay. Lori Beth usually shows up, so I'm, I'm a little surprised she's not here. Is this the Tuesday of the month that Somehow she has her EMT thingy. So I will share my screen here for a second and we'll do a couple of these things. <clears throat> and so here we have the balance sheet um, as of September 30th. Um, so I asked her to produce that today. And you see that um, <clears throat> our total assets are $3.3 million. Um, Total current liabilities are $9.6 million. Um, the, what else is of, of use here? The uh, bank account, we have $2.3 million in the bank account. And accounts receivable for another $803,000. That's my question. Is that your question? Yeah. The, the accounts receivable? Yeah. If you look yeah. at her list, there's a bunch of them that have, I believe we received the checks. Oops. She has a um, seven sheet on accounts receivable, but it, that's the one that seems to be a little odd. And here's the accounts receivable here. And, the, and this is the this would look to me to be the um, eight hundred thirty three thousand dollars of um, opera money, right? Yep. And but haven't uh, we received checks already? And um, basically we this looks like we have might have received uh, where's the where, i don't see orange in here this is orange. aging this is they haven't paid us i was just gonna say i didn't see orange in there at all yeah so anyway so it's, it's only the ones you haven't okay. paid yeah so uh we'll we'll try to get a we'll try to get yep. an answer from her on that okay and what was the other one and here are the expenses uh that were passed out to you as well, and there were two hundred about two hundred ninety thousand dollars in expenses for this uh, for this month. Questions, comments, observations. Tell you what, you I just I just have one comment before I go to RD, and that is, uh, we have four more checks waiting at CV at Central Vermont Regional Planning for me to go get. Um, I don't remember exactly which towns they were, but there's there's four checks I'm going to pick up on Thursday and drop into the bank. And uh, RD, I see that your hand is up, or is that residual? No, no, it's um, uh, it refers to um, what Ray was talking about. The bottom line on this aging summary, eight hundred and three thousand. Uh, those are our ARPA commitments. And over um, on the profit and loss, we have a town ARPA of 833,000. Um, now, is the 833,000 cash in hand? And if so, why isn't the additional 30,000 in, in, in the aging summary? Because they paid us. 30,000 30, came in after the summary was compiled? Aging is if they haven't paid us. So my guess is Orange paid us in September. So it wouldn't be. Oh, no, Orange paid us in like July. Yeah, yeah so Orange paid a long time ago. That, that's in the account. So aging is just things that we haven't been paid for yet. Well, um, David did. Uh, Cabot 
remitted its fifty thousand. And Callis did too. That's why I was pressing this table. Right. I don't know what this table means, but the but the bottom line is thirty thousand less than the profit and loss shows that we have received an income as Mm -hmm. of September. I presume the thirtieth of September. I, I was, so yeah, profit I was and guessing. loss, you actually include aging with the uh, current tally. So that's why it's different. Yeah, I, I would guess that this uh, this Quicken um, uh, needs to be updated. The QuickBooks need to be updated. Yeah, I think that's correct. Let me go to Ted Barnett, who has his hand up. And you're also on mute, Ted. Yes, I'm going to. Can you all hear me? Yeah, you're on the phone. Yeah. Great. Um, so it's also possible this was run on September 30th. If those checks got cashed in between September 30th and today, yeah. it would still show on aging. So if it's, you know, there is there's a little bit of lag. So just yep. wanted yeah. to point that out. That, that That's a good point. I can't I, I did bring half a dozen or maybe eight, a, a, a large number of checks I brought to the bank. Um, but by the time they cleared, um they, that well could be um they cleared you know october 2nd and, and just one other thing to note is that um Lori beth is producing these reports from the quickbooks um, records that are being maintained by the accountant okay she's not maintaining these books separately so I, I don't want you to, you know, uh, think that perhaps the chiefs failed to do something in particular. Right. Uh, there, there could be a lag in the time here for stuff to be put in, but the information is um, is uh, being put in by Bath Children and Associates. Uh, un- understood. Uh, Ted, your hand is up, or is that resi- left over? That is a residual hand. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, Actually, it looks like Lori Beth is on now. I see her. Uh, I see her as a connected person. Lori Beth, are you are you on the are you on the call? We're talking about the treasurer's report. Maybe not. Teams. Is, I know she's an invited person. Teams is dumb. Well, I, I just see you're, her in the you're list. Muted, Lori. I see her. I Finally, see her. Wait, it didn't want to unmute. Go. So yeah. there was a there was a question, Lori Beth, about this aging report, and it, it just seems like it's out of date. Uh, it's the one that came off of their QuickBooks. We'll have to okay. ask Batchelder um, about uh, what the difference is. That's okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's that's what we c- came to understand, Lori Beth. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Um, Ray or Lori Beth, do, do you want to continue through the treasurer's report? Or uh, I see a hand up from Chuck Burke before we go any further. Let's go to Chuck. Chuck, you must be on mute, sir. Um, I forgot what, who we're using for a bank, but uh, I would like to point out that I have had horrific issues over the years with QuickBooks syncing um, transactions through VSCCU. So if we're using VSCCU, uh, then it, it could just be that the, the connection dropped again and they have to go re-import the transactions and they're a little behind on that. Happens to me all the time. Yes, sir, we're using them. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure whether they do use the sync function or not. It's one thing I don't know if Batchelder's using it. Yeah, worth checking into, I think, Laura Beth. Yes. Chuck, do you want to follow up on that or are you good? Great. Any any additional discussion on the treasurer's report? All right, then let's uh Let's move to our executive director, and where are we these days? Well, uh, <laughs> there's a lot going on. Um, as you know, I, uh, I think Jerry sent out a business as usual update that goes through a few things that mm-hmm. we, we're we doing that, that are going on. Um, we got our first three poll licenses, which is a huge milestone. It's about 20 miles, so just... <laughs> What, what do we have? 1,180 to go um, for the network. But 
every every journey of 1200 miles starts with 20 miles so that's amazing uh they came from washington electric co-op who is continuing to do um the the tree trimming between spans and even though there has been a shortage of poles in the world um they've been able to set some poles for us mm-hmm. on some applications that we submitted um materials roll in every day we have a warehouse manager in montpelier receiving those materials and um we are working on truing up the bomb with nrtc it looks like it, it following a conversation we had with them today that our bomb if anything needs to be trued up downward which means that we may have ordered extra materials so far that's what it looks like um this is good news uh if there are any inconsistencies we'll uh notice them and order them uh but it looks as of right now like any inconsistencies would be in a direction that benefits us and in other words we may have ordered too many materials and have extras this is good because uh materials are increasing extremely quickly um both in in terms of how quickly it takes to get the the time it takes for them to get here as well as the pricing um design status we are we we got our our first approval from the independent review uh that the state is doing the ctc uh for our first uh, portion of our design and are finalizing more of the design uh, segments of the design of the network so that continues um the finalizing of the designs and uh licensing of the olts or the cabinet sites is something that koteki is working on nrtc is working on we're working on as well uh collaborating with washington electric co-op green mountain power toward locations where we can place our cabinets um the hub sites um so that's that's the big stuff on the construction end we're looking to finalize contracts for um reaching out uh public engagement marketing, first public engagement, um, and in implementing crowd fiber to reach out and get subscribers for when we actually launch the network. We're continuing to work with um, Waitsfield closely toward launching the network into operational, and that consists of things like specs for undergrounding and responsibility of what materials are ordered when and how to place personnel on the installs um what the capacity is so there are a lot of pieces moving toward this construction start but also looking forward toward the operations launch thanks thanks janiel i i, I want to point out one thing that i've been witnessing here that is extremely valuable and I, I just want to point it out for everybody that that's that's on the governing board attending the meeting today and th- and that is local area knowledge of what 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 the what's what's really happening on the ground you know NRTC is great and they come out here and they look and they 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 have a local presence now and they're they're out here and they're actually looking for a, a place to set up shop where they can have a, a you know a long term office, but the 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 knowledge of being of, of of on the ground and and to be able to look at a map and have somebody point out oh I know that area that is X Y and Z and here's the situation out there that is incredibly valuable it saves a tremendous amount of effort and the the the, the folks that bring that to the team, I, I just want to say thank you for that, because it, it really makes a big difference in what we're doing. And all of that happening at the design end will save a whole lot of heartache at the construction end. Um, so I, I just I just uh, wanted to put that out there. Uh, any any comments on what Janil has presented here? Things are moving. It may not seem like they're moving fast, but I promise you things are uh, are moving extremely fast um and moving forward no questions or comments i'll 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 move on the 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 middle mile grant and this is this is my bad i had action expected there there really is no action on this middle mile grant this is informational that the state and the vcbb is chasing uh some funds that are available for middle miles so that's 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 not the stuff that goes to the residents. It's 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 the 
the the loop that supports all the distribution to the residents, yeah. the backbone. Uh, there's funding for that. It is uh, it, it it's it's a little bit convoluted on how that funding is going to be made available. We signed on saying we would be interested in finding out more information and there's phases to it. So if we get to a second phase, we may have to um, uh, kind of just, you know, we have to make a decision whether or not we want to be a part of how this is going to move forward or not. But at this stage where it's just phase one, um, I, I kind of made the decision. We made the decision in a small group, but really I made the decision to say, yeah, keep us in, keep us in this, but let's, let's see where it goes because we don't need to make a long-term commitment. Um, it's informational still on how this is going to play out. The state is really running it. VCBB is in the, in the, in the van for making this happen. And you may have seen they had a, uh, they had a public service announcement or a, a press release. And that's really why I brought it up because there's there, there's nothing ripe here for a decision at all, uh, but it's just informational. If you've seen this press release, yes, we're, we're a part of it. If money becomes available and it really becomes available, then we'll have to decide whether or not we really wanna be a part of this. Um, but this is just purely informational in case you've seen the press release. If there are questions, I'm happy to answer them. R.D. Why would we not want to be a part of this? Because it is extremely convoluted. It's a public-private partnership that has lots of bells and whistles and hanging chads that all need to be lined up and the 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 dollar value to us by the time we get moving may not be all that large and for to be honest if somebody wants to take this on as their personal thing to do full time rd that would be great, yeah. <laughs> but we just don't have the bandwidth to chase a lot of these things. But let me go to Jeremy Hansen, who I saw hand go, went up. Go ahead, Jeremy. Yeah, so I I, I read over the, the press release and I looked at this, and I think one of the reasons that we might not want to choose to do this is exactly because of this public-private partnership. We are you know, potentially not giving away, but offering a portion of our network to Consolidated, to First Light, to VTEL, to other entities who have heretofore not been on board in terms of getting all of Vermont connected and who have been actual active obstacles to getting Vermont <laughs> connected. So what Jerry said about the, the is so I mean, the, the way I put it is the juice worth the squeeze. I mean, we may not actually end up with, it, it's not gonna, it's not a windfall for sure. Right. So that's all. No, that that's great, Jeremy. Thank you. You know, my 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 gut reaction was no, um, and you know, we didn't we didn't have to make a decision. We're just moving forward with the rest of the CUDs. We'll we'll see how this how this plays out. Siobhan, I see that your hand is up. Um, was RD was before me? I think. No, I had it. No, oh, okay. RD already had his say. It's your turn, Shimon. Oh, okay. Oh, no, time's up. You're done. <laughs> Go ahead, please. <laughs> no, I'm done. Thanks. <laughs> so I just wanted to say the one thing, and this is a genuine question I don't know the answer to. Could we be perceived as something negative by the state by failing to participate in this kind of endeavor. I just wanted to have said that and asked the question, that's it. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think that in my conversations with ECBB and the other CUDs, um, there's a tremendous amount of respect um, that goes in every direction. Uh, this, it, we understand that this needs to be a well in intelligently thought out deal if it's gonna happen between the public and private. And it, we ultimately, um, we're not being seen negatively or positively by our decision. We're we're being respected in that we're asking questions, 
and we will continue to ask those questions right up to the very end. And if we are going to be part of it, we're going to parse out the details. And if at the end of the day it doesn't work in our favor, we're not going to agree to it. And 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 the state. The state understands our positions and every CUD might have a slightly different position on this, but we're going to try to make this a mutually beneficial agreement if we can. And if we can't, we'll walk away and that's okay. And, and also I'd, I'd like to point out that this is this is something that it's a board decision. I mean, you know, it, it, the day-to-day -day decision is, you know, do we wanna continue looking at this? That's one thing. But whether or not we sign on to this is a board decision. So that that will uh, that will that will be up to y'all, as they say. Any any additional discussion on this uh, middle mile grant? Oh, Tom. Hey, Tom. Go ahead, sir. Please. I'm not sure I fully understand what is involved with the middle mile grant, but in hearing that you know potentially allow the comcast or consolidated to be able to use our fiber for their purposes is the reverse also true would we be able to use their middle mile so that we could potentially go for areas that we can't go otherwise that no. that, that so far has not been a part of what's been presented no this is this is all for the new stuff being built good Thanks. good good question <laughs> ray go ahead sir so the grant's being put in for $100 million, pick a number, there's a number, there's a huge number, it's like $100 million. It has to have some matching funds in it, that's why there's a private partnership involved with that. And so First Light, CCI and others are contributing money to be part of this. The um, There's going to be formed a what they call a special purpose vehicle, which would be the group that con actually controls this infrastructure. Um, it'll be uh, the, the number of people, the number of entities that are on there will have more CUDs than will have private entities. So the the public sector actually will be able to control the thing. Um, there's going, to, we're building out what, 288, 144 strand, whatever it's going to be, for example, and that um, First Light will have access to so many strands and we will have the rest uh etc so it it's to what extent to what how that number is divided it could be 25 75 whatever the percentage match was had to be and if they get 25 percent, they get 25 percent of the strands we get the rest of the thing uh we can we control it because we have we um we outnumber the folks on the board and it's going to be public infrastructure um the first light will use it for its backbone and enterprise work but they're not building additional fiber for the the private interest. So it would be the the fiber that we're designing. Part of that would be for the for the private interest. As as it seems right now, there's a lot a lot to be determined that is unknown. And we basically said we're willing to take a look at what comes out of the next the next bit. Now, Jeremy, Matt, your hand is up. Go ahead, sir. So what it kind of sounds like is when we're building in sort of backbony type areas, we would get money to sort of build extra capacity that would then be shared with other people, first light, et cetera. Is that, that is not the way right it's here? been presented, sir. That is not the way no. it's been presented. It's been presented that we are designing to our standard and a portion of what we're designing to our standard would be shared with the private interest. So aren't we designing to what we need? Wouldn't we need to over, to to build, you know, if part of our network is going to be used by First Light, if they're going to get 25% of our strands, wouldn't we need to add more strands in? The, the state so, has required us, the state has already required us to build and have a lot of dark fiber. Our backbone has a lot of dark fiber in it set aside for future use. Right. And this is part of that future use. Right. That would be the best. Okay. But we're already designing for that. Let me go to Jeremy because his hand is up. Go ahead, Jeremy, please. So so this is not so Jeremy, this is not sharing per se. This is contractually reserving via an indefeasible right of use. So effectively permanently allocating the space, uh, a number of strands for this purpose, 
which would no longer be available to us. So it, it's not it's not flexible, at least in the language that was described in, in the press release in their application. And, For and, a one-time and payout? Be off just leasing the first light? We, we could a, lease the first light later, but with this, it would they would essentially have an indefeasible right of use or someone would have an indefeasible right of use for a certain number of the strands. Without us building additional strands for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Alan, go ahead, sir, please. You yeah, unmute. <clears throat> Sorry. Whose idea is this? Who's making the proposal? State. The, the, the state, state is, is the, the VCBB is so, making making this proposal. It, it's a it's a it's a um, excuse me. It is a federal request for grant for, for proposals for this grant. So this is a federal grant that's going out to the nation, and the VCBB is trying to figure out whether or not they can leverage you know a hundred million dollars or not. I mean, it's reasonable to ask, and that's that's what the they're trying to do. It was from the Infrastructure Bill, Infrastructure yeah. Act. So it's the it's the companies that got this put into the Infrastructure Act with their lobbyists and their congressmen, and now they're shifting it downstream. That, that may well be the case. I don't know. In her conspiracy brain. <laughs> uh, Ray, is, is that residual or do you want to add, sir? No, the only other point, the only other point is that uh, the relationships that we're talking about is very similar to the relationship we were going to have with WEC. We were going to build out this backbone and WEC was going to get part of it and uh, and we were getting an IRU or they were getting an IRU, blah, blah, blah. It's a similar kind of relationship. It, it's, this is not, um, this is not necessarily a bad thing. We're going to wind up getting millions of dollars out of it. And frankly, we're going to need those millions of dollars if it happens. I, indeed, if it happens. So let's see. Let's let's go to Tom, Siobhan, and RD. Is your hand up? No, I'll lower it. <laughs> okay, Tom, Siobhan, and Jeremy, Matt. I was wondering, um, thinking beyond the, uh, the traditional ground telecommunications companies, could this potentially be? Um, something we would be working with Verizon or AT&T to help build out cellular coverage in our area, yeah. which might be something we want to go after anyways. Um, and this would be a way to help fund that. Just wonder if there are other other ways of looking at this beyond our competition with our immediate uh, surrounding folks. <laughs> Yeah, you know that that's a good point. I, I would I would say right now we really don't have enough information, and the only thing we said we would do would be to follow along to find out if there's additional information. You know, when when more information comes, we can make a real informed decision. You know, at this point, it's a it's a little bit open ended, and we said we would go along as so that we can learn more before we make any kind of decision. So that was Siobhan and Jeremy, please. So I just wanted to say that it's different from with WEC because WEC isn't a for-profit entity. Sorry. WEC is a cooperative. And so that hits me very differently than consolidated. Um, I kind of, I chafe at the idea that we, we offered to work with these companies when we started up and they told us to hit the road and that they, they wouldn't even talk to us. And now that there's some money in the offing and the possibility that we're going to build what they refused to build for the last 25 years, mm -hmm. that they're going to piggyback on what we're doing and force, not force us, we have to agree to it, I express that. But what I can't remember how Jeremy said, an indivisible... I mean, it, it's yeah. we're committing this, giving it to them for this amount of money, basically a one time payment of this so they can leverage the footwork we've put in that they wouldn't do before. And it, the whole thing just I, I agree. We need more information and I'm jumping to conclusions, but it stinks to high heaven to me. I'm done. 
<laughs> well, yeah, concur. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but that 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 that's that that's how I walked away from the uh, series of emails. Uh, any other discussion on this? I thought this was going to be you know just a a, a couple minute discussion. <laughs> Anyone else need to vent? Uh, okay, so. Uh, Let's go to our inventory management contract. Um, we there there is there is no uh, um, no action expected here. Um, but Janiel, would you like to give us an update? I can do it. You can do it. I'm happy to. So uh, Wild Blue Yonder has been retained as our warehouse manager, and we are getting ready to um, in. in put in place an inventory management system, which is extremely important because materials come and pretty soon materials will be going into the field, kidding um, by the construction contractors, replenishing of supplies. Uh, so inventory management is a very important part of warehousing and Wild Blue Yonder um, is going to be taking on that very complex task with us as well as with whoever we hire as construction contractors and our construction management at NRTC. So I, I would I would just add that that we're in the negotiation negotiations that we are in, uh, they are there now and we're we're kind of going on a month to month uh un, until we get this, you know, totally smoothed out. We are almost there almost there so it's a good it's 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 a good thing and uh, Janiel, did you mention that the they're using the same software that's used by nrtc so that tracking um that that okay. tracking inventory will be able to work with the designers and the construction managers and our warehouse all using the same software so that that's a good thing the software is called finale uh, it is uh, an industry favorite. Yes, NRTC uses it. And it allows, uh, it actually reads intelligently what you've burned through and what you are likely to burn through based on previous burn rates. It lets you, alerts you if um, your projections are off. It allows you to share materials with other, say for instance, we decided to do a sharing with another CUD or other CUDs. It allows you to do that. Um, so it, it is a comprehensive inventory management swapping. It allows you to invoice and bill and do a number of different things with with inventory, with, with materials as they come and go. Thank you. That, that's great. And any any questions on our inventory management? So I I'd, I'd I'd like to switch into the next thing, our construction contracting. Uh, we there's no action expected here. We we are coordinating our certainly the the MSA the master service agreement where where we we want to make sure that 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 we have that finalized before we get into very specific scopes of work. Uh, we have meetings coming up in the very near future with our construction contractors that we believe we're going to contract with and those co those discussions are going to be all about getting into the field this fall and making sure that that happens we're really close with our master service agreement we're not there but we're really close and we're having um Pre preemptive. What, what what's the word I'm looking for here? We're we're having these meetings in advance so that when the ink dries on that, which in Acrobat is instantaneous, that they'll 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 be able to move into the field for us uh, because they know exactly where we're working. They've seen they've seen what we the the the, the designs that we're bringing into the field, and we're doing all the pre coordination that we possibly can so that we can get actual construction done this fall and we have a we have a, a very important meeting tomorrow morning uh, with them uh, uh, about this but Ray I'll ask you would you do you want to add anything on the contracting aspect to this 
Uh, well, I guess what I would say is that uh, we've requested feedback on a master services agreement that we've sent to them. Um, that information is dribbling back in again. We'd like to synchronize all of the uh, contracts with all of our construction firms to be the, to be the same. Um, each of them thereafter will wind up with uh, statements of work, scopes of work, right, work orders that uh, we will execute uh, for individual OLTs. And um, as Jerry just said, we're, we have some conversations coming up with those um, contractors over the next two weeks. So I'm hoping that we're going to have these contracts in hand uh, by the end of the month um, and that work will proceed um, shortly thereafter. Any 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 questions on that? It, it's it's a little bit like pushing a string, but once you get past that threshold of signed contracts, we want to make sure the folks are in the field. And and those are the discussions where those are exactly the discussions we're having. Um, if if there if there are no more questions or a need for discussion about this, I'm I'm going to pass it over to Ray again for the uh, 2023 budget. This one, we actually do need action because this budget uh, by the end of the week needs to go to the towns. And uh, this budget's been in the works since July, I would say, maybe June. I don't remember exactly, uh, but I'm going to pass it over to Ray to move forward with the budget, please. Yeah, so <clears throat> I, let me remind, remind you what the process is. In, in December, we're actually going to adopt the budget. Tonight, the process, the uh, the goal is to approve a budget, and we approve a budget, and off it goes to our 20 uh, member towns, right, uh, for them to give us feedback. We hold a public hearing at our next board meeting in November, uh, taking input from the public or whomever wants to give comments, and then again, like I said, we adopt the budget in uh, in December. Uh, if we approve the budget tonight, which I hope we will, then the uh, treasurer actually sends that budget out to the towns. And so uh, what I'd like to do now is kind of walk you through what changes have been made um, since the last time I talked to you about the budget, because and there aren't that many changes. So let's uh, let's go with that. And so hopefully you can see my screen and let's see if I can pump it up here a little bit more. And so uh, what I want to uh, reference here is the was column, okay? This this is what this number was, and this is what that number is now, right? So the the, the town ARPA budget was $750,000, and now it's $833,000. And I'm expecting that number may change um, in by December for a couple of reasons. One is that um, we're we're going to get matching funds from the state, in a different fashion than we than previously or, um, um, uh, the plan was. And the second thing is that uh, the program is going to be extended for a period of time. Both of those things require action by the BCBB and uh, that hasn't taken place yet. Hopefully it will take place before before December. So that's the change here is just that just that modest change there. Uh, let me move this. Uh, let me move this screen out of the. Move this thing out of the way. Can I move it out of the way? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Uh, number two. Uh, the only change here. Now we're talking about administration expenses. The only change here is a change in row, line ten here. Licensing fees and dues. It was thirty five. It was bumped up to fifty thousand. Uh, and the reason for that is that I'm um, expecting that we're going to expend more dues this year than last year for Vicuda. Uh, for example, and uh, there are going to be some more licensing costs uh, coming up. Uh, third, uh, pre-con, pre-construction and construction, no change. No changes there. Operations uh, is a change in, in number nine here, affordability fund. It was 10,000, it's 50,000, and this it represents uh, a, a clearer understanding of what our relationship might be with the equal access to broadband, uh, that this number may go up for that. And Jeremy, did you have a question about this particular item or this section? You're on mute. So just in general, um, so the was, is that comparing 2022 to 2023 or no, is that comparing? The last, the last time we spoke. Okay. 
Okay, okay. This, this, that's exactly. the only thing that's, that's the only things that have been changed. I'm sorry I didn't make that clear. <laughs> and then we get into the reserves. The reserves just reflect the delta, right, for uh, from what happened before. So the reserves, uh, it was 175,000 and now it's 178,000. Uh, the total expenses have gone up um, slightly um, and the total uh, total income has gone up uh, slightly as well, reflecting the difference in those ARPA funds, for example. So not a lot I has I think you changed. need to shift your, there you go. Thank you, Ray. Not, not, not a lot has changed from um, from the first time we went through this, just those three, four, five items uh, before. And I see somebody with their hand up. Henry's got his hand up. Go ahead, Henry, please. Uh, yeah, under the pre-construction uh, tab that you showed, um, did we, the make ready costs, um, we've been finding those to be higher than expected. That that's already been addressed here in that um, 2023 number there. Yeah, it's I would say so far uh, from our early numbers, the short answer is yes. Uh, between now and December, we're going to learn more. And so maybe some additional adjustments going to be made there. Okay. Thanks. Thanks, Henry. Uh, and and. Your hand is still up. There we go. Thanks, Henry. So, so the, this so this budget has been through um, multiple iterations for sure. It's been approved by the finance committee. It's been approved by the executive committee. It is now being brought to the uh, governing board, and you you'll you'll see that it is a. Uh, it, it's an adventurous budget because we plan on spending most of the money that's being given to us. And we hope to get uh, additional funds to continue construction throughout calendar year uh, 23. So this is this is a this budget is built on as many hard numbers as as we could come up with. Of course, our construction is all estimates, but we're learning what pre-construction is. We're learning what materials cost. We're, we, we're, we're, we're learning what the what it takes to get a, a, a pole license. And all of that is reflected in this budget. Um, and we will learn a lot about construction as we as we move into it in the in the coming in the coming year. So so, at this point, at this point in time, it's a twenty five million dollar budget. And um, I'm I'm ready to make a motion if uh, when you're ready. Well, I, I'd like to take Alan's. Alan put his hand up first, so let, let's get Alan's comment, please. Uh, so I I want to make sure I understand the budget. Our budget year is January one to December thirty one. It's not it's not July one to okay. We're not like the state. So under the under income, uh, the B section service subscriptions. We have estimated income from subscriptions uh, providing internet service of four hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Can can you explain, Ray, what that really means? How many people that expects we're connecting for yeah, how many I, months I, I in that fiscal another, year? Yeah, I had another spreadsheet for that uh, that, th that I thought I showed you, but <laughs> what I could tell you is this: what that represents is an, an estimation of this number here. Can you see that 1,190 subscribers? Yep. yep. For, so 1,200 subscriptions during the course of the year. Of course, they don't all come in January. They come out over a period of time as the installations are taking place, right? And so, mm -hmm. so many each month. And you may recall in an earlier spreadsheet that I showed you that uh, November and December showed something like 190 subscriptions each month which was, you know, that's a lot per day, right? There's 20 working days, that's 10 a working day, right? Which WC, which Waitsfield Telecom said they could they could handle. And so that's where that number came from. It came from our, our estimated construction um, over the course of the, over the course of the year, including the construction work they're gonna complete this year with installations actually starting in January. And, and I'll add to that, Ray, that it's also based on the low end of the ramp up take rate 
So th- this was this was this was starting out with like a 24 percent take rate or something yeah. on the really low end for the first few months, uh, first year, first couple of years. So it, yeah. it's the yeah. low end take rate. Um, and I, I very specifically remember seeing the spreadsheet where it was actually month by month where we were we were adding folks, adding folks in uh, to get to that twelve hundred number or 1190. And, uh, I guess I, I guess I, I, I do remember the spreadsheet, but somehow when I saw this number tonight, I thought half a million dollars starting in January. That's like uh, three months away. Um, and it, it, it's 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 a little bit scary. That's all. Um, it, it's it, it it sounds aggressive because obviously the months of January, February, Mar- March and even up here, April and in, in my part of the in my part of the district, there's no way that anybody's going to be working up here. Uh, simply because of the weather conditions. So we're left with eight months where this revenue has got to be generated. And it just, uh, it just sort of shakes me a bit. Yeah, we're not talking about construction. You know, installations can continue to take place in January, February, March, April. Waitsfield Telecom does installations all year round. Now, now obviously, the underground conduits might be a little tough. But yeah, that's aerial, one thing I'm thinking about. Yeah, what aerial, which is the makes up the majority of the of the drops, will be uh, can be done. Yeah, the other thing is, I don't, I'm sure some of you who are, who live on dirt roads remember this. Th- this year, we had a mud season that lasted about four <laughs> weeks. When I mean, literally, there were it wasn't just roads in in one or two towns; it was roads throughout all of northern Vermont. If it was dirt. Uh, you couldn't get construction trucks on the very easily and cars were hard to get around too. So I just, I, I'm obviously imagining the worst things. Um, so so I, I feel better about the number. <laughs> and, well, the worst things aren't, aren't unlikely not to happen. I mean, it's very possible. What I would say to you too is this, in January, 11 installations, 11 is what the, is, is what the, is what the chart showed. Eleven. Yeah, so, Alan, you're you're exactly right. I mean, when you when you look at the area that's 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 going to be in our first two DAs, it's almost all dirt roads. I mean, uh, our our it's all CV fiber is all dirt roads. I mean, uh, you know, ex- except for Route 12, Route 2, Route 14, everything else is a dirt road at 302. Otherwise, we're all you know we're 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 all dirt roads. Um, and you know, your, your, your point is well taken. It could be less, it could be more. So much of this is weather dependent. Um, but you know, we've had, we've had discussions with Waitsfield. We've had discussions with construction contractors. We, you know, we, we, we really haven't made this up. We've tried to make it as realistic, um, as possible, but at some point, the weather's going to clear. The roads are going to be good, and we're going to be going like you know full speed at, at some at 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 some point. Uh, but let me go to Jeremy Matt. Go ahead, Jeremy. I was just, just going to say that yeah, it's all dirt roads, but also forest. Yeah, that, that's us. I mean, that that. We we have the construction folks telling us, you know, a gang goes. A, remind me now, was it a mile a week? A gang goes a mile a week. No, mile a day. Mile a day. Gang goes a mile a day. So they're hitting five poles in a day. That's all they're going to do. That you know, this this isn't this isn't some flat land in Texas where they can do thirty poles a day. They're going to do five poles a day. And, oh, and that's pointless. you know that's that's already. You know, blended into the analysis. Uh, but l- let me go to R.D. here. Go ahead, R.D. Just very briefly, uh, during the nightmare mud season last year, our um, uh, our um, maple sh- uh, uh, maple syrup makers managed to get over the back roads in the worst possible under the worst possible conditions. So it's not inconceivable that mud season would not be a terrible impediment. Yeah, yeah, but you're you're bringing religion into it now when you talk about maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> and, and any uh and, and any other comments on uh, to keep the discussion going on on our budget? I mean, it's it's you know it's it's been through all of the procedures. You know, to uh, to quote Ray here, the procedure is the process. The process is the procedure. We've done that, and we've landed here. And I'm hoping to hear a motion that we would actually move forward with this budget. So I, I move that the governing board approve the CV Fiber 2023 budget, and I call attention to Chuck Second. Barrett's all models are wrong, but some are useful. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Second. <laughs> Second. <laughs> okay, RD, would you like to add to the discussion, sir? No. No. Thank you. No. Okay. I see a hand up. Uh, any uh, no, any sorry. other. Any other discussion on the motion on the budget? Very well, then. We have a motion on the floor. We have a second by. I, th I heard Siobhan again. I heard Siobhan, too. Yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy, you just got to get quicker. I, 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 I don't know what to tell I you, man. I said it well before Siobhan, but it just... I. <laughs> You may have what said it before, Siobhan, Dude, but because you've got me. five down and one up, we didn't hear it until tomorrow. <laughs> why, don't we just make, why don't we just make Siobhan the default second? I've offered. <laughs> you can just All right. assume well, every motion will be seconded. Yeah. Let, let, let's bring this to a vote, folks. Is, is there anyone opposed to the motion? Are there any, any abstentions? All right, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you, everybody. Very, very much appreciated. Chuck, go ahead, sir. I see your hands up. I would just like to send a heartfelt thank you to Ray and the rest of the Finance Committee. Uh, it's a lot of hard work to put together uh, as complicated a budget as something like this is. Uh, you have to ch check your assumptions again and again and, and think through realities as in an ever-changing landscape. Uh, great work, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, you know, that, that's, that's wonderful. And I would like to add one thing here that I've noticed since I've, since I've been chair. I mean, I, I've always noticed it. This hasn't changed. And that is, this is not a rubber stamp community here. <laughs> if you're going to bring it, you better bring it. And don't expect everybody to say yes just because you brought something to the table. And I really appreciate that. That's, we need that. We really do need that. So thank you to everybody on, 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 on that count. Uh, let, let's move to the construction schedule. Um, I, I, there, there's, a, there's a lot going on here. I, I, um, at some point during this discussion, we may want to go into an executive session. Um, Ray, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you to start the discussion and see how far you can get before we're talking about things that need to be in executive session. Go ahead, sir. Going into executive session requires two motions. I'm going to make the first one. <laughs> we, you, you can't hardly get anywhere with the things that we really need to share uh, on, this, on this particular topic. Um, so I, I think, Jerry, we need to go in executive session. So there's two motions. It's premature public uh, knowledge. The first one is that there's agreement that it would put us at competitive disadvantage. And the next one is to move into executive session. Uh, and the, we can also invite people into the executive session when we make the motion. I don't know who's I don't know who's here. I see an awful lot of uh, folks. I'm not sure. It, it, my view of the world is all delegates and alternates, uh, the treasurer, obviously, and um, uh, but I'm not sure who else is, and, and also vice chairs, committee committee chairs and committee vice chairs um, as well. I see John with his hand up. Yeah, let's let's bring John Walters in because because he's our he's our outlet to the outside world to a large degree. Isn't is that the last person, person you want? Other than uh, and Laurie Beth. Who are well, Janiel, of course, is our executive director. Without no, I I know I'm saying who are not delegates or alternates. Um, so the only only person that we would need to remove is Orca. And they're used to that. 
So move the pursuant to one VSA section 313 alpha one alpha. We find that premature public knowledge of the discussion related to CV fiber construction schedule will put CV fiber at a competitive disadvantage. Second. That, that second goes to Jeremy. Um, I'm, I'm just going to ask, ask for, um, is there any discussion on going into executive session on this motion? Tom? Um, it just feels like we should provide a reason why discussing our construction schedule would be something that needs to be kept out of the public view. I, I think the the answer to that is that this is about deployment of resources. This is about our our relationship with contractors, um, multiple contractors actually, and this is about letting folks know where and when we're going to start building, which is. No, very competitive information. That's the definition of competitive disadvantage. Tom, does that satisfy you, sir? It does. I just feel like it should be stated. Okay. Thank you. Thank and you. And the next, uh, it, oh, you, you have to take a vote. Yes. So are, are there any opposed to the motion? Are there any abstentions? Okay. Hearing none, the mo motion passes unanimously. Thank you all. Go ahead, Ray. Second motion is to move we enter executive session to discuss the CV fiber construction schedule and that we invite all delegates, alternates, chairs, vice chairs, um, the treasurer, obviously the executive director. Are we leaving anybody out? Do we want John Walters in? John Walters. He's the vice chair. You're a vice chair, aren't you, John? Oh, yeah, okay. okay. Yes. Yeah, um, as they may add additional information pursuant to 1 VSA Section 313 Alpha 3. Second. Second goes to Siobhan. Are there any opposed to the motion? Any abstentions? The motion passes. Thank you. Give me a moment to stop recording. And then we'll pick this up back again when we come out of executive session. So it's 7.03 and we are stopping recording to go into executive session. Okay, it appears that the recording has stopped. Excellent, thank you. So I think I think our discussion starts here and we've, we've talked a little bit about this before. I see Chuck with his hand up. Yeah, I just want to give everyone a friendly reminder that uh, during executive session, we should refrain from chat that Jeremy said the same thing. Thank you. Excellent. Thank, thank you.